Annyeong haseyo! Curious about the Philippines and Korea? Our podcast is for you! Annyeong kwento mo! It's a podcast where we will talk about lifestyle, music, and culture in both the Philippines and Korea. Hosted by Lloyd and Jazz, be amazed and inspired with different stories yet to unfold. Listen to our podcast only here at Pinoy Soul Radio. where we will talk about lifestyle, music, and culture in both the Philippines and Korea. Do you have a story to share? Well then, here is Anyong Pwento Mo, Philippine Ambassador. Anyong, I'm Lloyd. Anyong po, I'm Jazz. So, whew, this is the day we all have been waiting for. I mean, this is the first ever episode of Anyong Pwento Mo Podcast. Yes, Lloyd, it is very special. I mean, all of our... Next episodes are special, but today, it's our first episode. So, I guess I could yeah. say na the most special because it's the pilot episode. Yeah, I mean, it's very special because, you know, I still feel like I'm dreaming right now because she accepted our interview. I mean, our invitation for the interview of this podcast. Uh, I mean, we're just interns, but yeah. I, mean, I couldn't <laughs> believe myself that we will get to interview her for our for Anyong Kwento Mo, our podcast, I mean, if you think about it, uh, she's a very high-profile person and she represents the Filipinos uh, in Seoul, South Korea right now. Yes. So, uh, before we start uh, the interview with her, by the way, Jazz, uh, I just want to I'm just curious, you know, in general, how do you keep a relationship healthy? I think if you want to keep a relationship healthy, uh, of course, understanding is kubaga number one rule. Uh, because when you understand this person or this group of people you are with in how they feel, uh, what they want, I think it, it will eventually lead to respect and vice versa. It's also, in a way, knowing that through understanding that you two are different persons and your beliefs and yung mga paniniwala mo, it's different from each other. So, I guess yeah. it all boils down to uh, good communication. When you have good communication, <clears throat> it's everything will go out uh, smoothly na din. Yes. If that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> ikaw, Lloyd. <laughs> Wait lang. So, paano ko ba itatop yung sagot mo? Parang pang Miss Universe na ata yun. Or, di ba? Pero anyway, ako naman, Jazz, in terms of keeping a relationship healthy, just like with my friends, di ba? I mean, I always made sure we are very open to each other. And kasi, di ba, sometimes, uh, kapag you are not on the same page and even hiding things with each other, doon nag-start mag-arise ng mga issues and conflicts that could affect one's relationship. So, I guess, in order for you, for us to avoid that happening, the key is to be open and always uh, choose to understand the situation first. But Jazz, ito pa, may isa pa akong follow-up question. How about keeping a healthy relation, I mean, a healthy diplomatic relationship between two countries? What's your take on that? Uh, if I knew the answer, I would be to being ko sayo, but <laughs> I'm not the right person to, an- to answer that question right now. But our yeah. guest today, is the right person to do so. Yes, and and this someone is actually our guest for today. Yeah, um, maybe let's not keep our listeners waiting. Uh, why not introduce who is this very special guest today? Yes. Okay. So are you ready, Nava? Okay. Uh, she has over twenty-five years of experience in the diplomacy and governance sphere. She previously served as Consul General in New York, USA Minister and Consul General in London, UK, as well as earlier diplomatic assignments in Hong Kong and Mexico. 
She has likewise served in senior positions in the Department of Foreign Affairs, including the Coordinator Office of the Secretary. She has degrees in law, China business law, literature, and cultural studies from the University of the Philippines, Ateneo University School of Law, University of Hong Kong, and Queen's University, Canada. She is the current Philippine ambassador to South Korea. Please welcome on our show, Ambassador Her Excellency Maria Teresa V. Dizon de Vega. Hello, Ambassador. Teresa de Vega Imida. Pleasure to meet you all. Pleasure to meet you, Lloyd and Jazz. May I call you Jazz? Yes, oh, yes. Well, I'll call you Jess. Yes. Uh, great um, honor for me to be part of your initial broadcast for Anyong Kwento Mo. And um, I'd like to thank uh, all of you for inviting me. I'd also like to thank um, Nash Ang, yes. uh, who introduced me to your group. He yes. is um, he is a pride of the Filipino Korean community here, but he's presently not here in, yes. in Seoul. He's doing uh, graduate further studies, graduate studies in San Francisco, yeah. I believe. But he is one of the um, Commission on Filipinos Overseas awardees this year for migrant advocacy in media. So wow. congratulations to Nash and um, congratulations also on this project which um, Nash has been supporting because it gives an opportunity for for um, our very talented um, young people like you Lloyd and Jasmine and your entire team uh, to you know to, to have a chance to, to try out this particular field and, and I hope uh, you will continue to grow um, in this field because um, new media as we like to call it, uh, new media uh, is becoming more and more prevalent in our daily lives, not just in the Philippines, but um, in many, many parts of the world. Yes. So, ayun, uh, welcome, Ambassador, to Anyong Kwento Mo Podcast. So, uh, before we start the, the interview, I just want to ask, kumusta naman po kayo ngayon? How's the weather there in South Korea? Uh, well, we're, well, the first day of spring was supposed to have been um, about uh, roughly about a week ago, just wow. uh, close to a week ago. But uh, it's still a little chilly, but the weather is improving here. And... Um, uh, cherry blossom season uh, will soon uh, uh, upon us here in Seoul. It's already started in some other parts of um, Korea, actually, in the warmer regions like uh, Busan, uh, Kimhae, uh, Jeju Island, you know, in the southern part of the country. But it's going probably going to take a few more days um, or maybe a week for for spring to finally arrive in uh, in Seoul and in other parts. Grabe. Hindi uh, imagine ko pa lang yung description yung, kung anong meron yun sa Korea. Parang gusto ko na pumunta na. <laughs> soon lang <laughs> tayo. Diba, parang, hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. Take me to South hopefully Korea. Hopefully diba? Yes, hopefully po soon. Grabe. Uh, so, dito naman po, Ambassador, if we may share din po. Uh, in the po spring, it's more of... <laughs> Summer. Almost summer. It's yes. summer. Summer, summer na in the Philippines. And, and makikita po siya kasi uh, yung mga families, naglawag na din po yung uh, quarantine protocols, yung COVID uh, rules po dito. So, mostly po, uh, yung mga tao po dito, uh, they book resorts and dinadala na din po yung mga uh, kids kasi pwede na po sila lumabas and pwede na rin po sila sa mall. So, yeah. That's wonderful. That's, that's really good news, Jazz. Thank you for sharing that. Actually, um, since the Philippines reopened its borders to international travelers, especially the fully vaccinated uh, travelers with no quarantine for the fully vaccinated, we've been um, really pushing for more visitors from abroad to come to the Philippines. Uh, there's also no more quota on incoming flights and passengers and they're very very um, excited to travel to the Philippines. In fact, since we reopened um, last month, um, we've already had several thousand Korean visitors. So we'd like to see more, especially as Jasmine said, um, it's almost summer. Yes. It's almost summer, summer in the Philippines and they, they already have um, some favorite destinations like Boracay, Cebu, um, wow. um, Lark, yeah. for golf because they, they like to play golf um, and some emerging uh, favorite destinations for our Korean friends um, would include Palawan and Bohol. So, yeah. we're hoping to see more of them. 
uh, here in the Philippines. I'm uh, sorry, uh, they're there in the Philippines. The Philippines, yes. <laughs> wow, grabe na excited man ako doon. Di ba parang for the longest time since we experienced this pandemic, di ba parang ang tagal talagang na-miss yung mga gantong opportunities since di ba parang we, we need to follow the protocols and stay at home. So, I'm very excited po talaga. Okay, so uh, Ambassador, to, to start the podcast formally, uh, one of the first things we'd like to know is that behind the career diplomat and Philippine Ambassador, who is Ambassador Maria Teresa B. Dizon de Vega? Uh, I'm I'm actually a public servant first and foremost a public servant. Um, I often uh, call myself um, an accidental diplomat because this was not my my um, my career or goal vision for myself when I was um, when I was still about your age. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm guessing you're you're both um, in university right now, no? Yes. You're, or about to finish university. Yes. Um, I actually was in the academe for um, almost five years. Almost five years. Um, uh, I was a faculty member um, of the um, Department of English uh, Studies and Comparative Literature um, of uh, the University of the Philippines in Diliman, uh, which is my alma mater. So I went straight into um, the academe uh, after graduation. And um, I actually did my, my master of studies in Canada along this field, um, cultural wow. studies, literature and, and cultural studies. Uh, so uh, I, I just happened to take the um, foreign service officers exam, which is um, a requirement of the Department of Foreign Affairs to become a diplomat. And uh, when I when I heard of the exam, I thought, uh, well, maybe I'll try this for a year or two. But I ended up staying, and I am now entering my um, about to enter my 28th year. <laughs> Believe it or wow. not, of service um, in the Department of Foreign Affairs, and um, over 30 years of, of service in in the government. Um, so that's my professional side. The the other side is I'm also a wife. Um, I'm one half of a diplomatic couple. <laughs> my my husband is currently is also a career diplomat um, and also a lawyer like myself. So we're both lawyer diplomats, um, lawyers and diplomats. Uh, he is currently serving as our uh, Philippine ambassador to um, to Belgium uh, and Luxembourg, and also our permanent representative to the European Union to the EU. So he's based in in Europe. At wow. the moment. And we have a we have a we have a teenage daughter um, who is um, with me. <laughs> yeah. Wow, grab it! I mean, yung credentials like it's on top. <laughs> Pero, no, 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 no. It's, it's something I always tell the young people. Um, you can do better, actually. You, can. you have um, if you if you put your mind to it, if you have a clear goal, uh, then you can you know the uh, sky's the limit. That's the limit for 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 um, the young people now. Kaya nyo, kaya kaya nyo abutin yun. Uh, kaya nyo pang lagpasan. Actually, oh, just bakal <laughs> you know in the next coming years, ikaw nang ano? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you diba? never know. Yeah. Please consider a career in in the foreign service. I and like, I I'll follow my dad. That's <laughs> what. <laughs> Kasi po yung dad ko rin po. Uh, Worked at the embassy at some point. Oh. Ah, ah, in in what country? In ah, uh, dito po sa Manila. Ah, sa Manila with ano do sa isa sa mga foreign embassies. Ah, uh, sa sa may ano po? Andi po sa may uh, U.S. embassy po. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, may idea ka ng ng buhay ng uh, in the international diplomatic service. It's it's a uh, it's an exciting time, but it's uh, also very service-oriented. Yeah. Uh, especially but for us Filipino. He's retired na din po. Oh, I see. I see. So, yun pala may pagmamanahan pala si... Si so Jazz, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll ask si, ano, tatawin si Daddy. Hey, Dad, what do you think? I'll take this career. Tingnan natin mamaya kung ano yung comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baka magulat yun. And then, uh... With that, po, uh, Ambassador, yung, your credentials, po, but we would like to know, uh, when were you appointed as the Ambassador of the Philippines to Seoul, South Korea? Po? 
Um, I was actually um, appointed as ambassador by the president because um, in the Philippines, uh, uh, ambassadorial appointments are made only by the president of, of the country. Um, early um, in the first half of 2021, but uh, under our system, under Philippine law, when an ambassador is appointed, you have to, um, you also need the confirmation of your appointment by the Commission on Appointments, which is um, a commission composed of uh, members of the Philippine Senate and the Philippine House of Representatives. So there's a public hearing for that. And um, the public hearing in my case was held uh, last uh, March 2021. Um, and I had to wait for um, you know one or two months to get my agreement. Uh, the agreement uh, that is um, that's a diplomatic term. Oh, so so just kailangan alam mo yan kasi <laughs> yan. Take some in notes. The, <laughs> um, the the agreement is uh, like the approval of the country where you're being sent to. So the Korean government issued an agreement. Um, for my nomination as uh, Philippine ambassador to the Republic of Korea, and I, um, at that time, I was Philippine ambassador to Germany, to the Federal Republic of Germany, wow. based in Berlin. Um, and um, I arrived in Korea the end of July of 2021. So, bago-bago po ako. Na seven, going on my eighth month eight. here in Korea. And then I prese officially presented my credentials as Philippine um, ambassador to um, the president of, of uh, the Republic of Korea, President Moon Jae-in, in October, along with six other um, ambassadors from, from other countries, from other regions. So, yun yung, there's a there's a process there's a very strict diplomatic process that's uh, observed um, in in practice in, in all countries so even in the Philippines if you become an ambassador to the Philippines um, the process is the same you also oh, wait for um, approval from the country you're being sent to so the Philippine government also issues an agreement uh, it's a French word agreement but it actually just means agreement or approval that uh, yes, you are qualified that we accept you as the ambassador, um, as the envoy of your country. That's amazing. Uh, and great. So we also have presentation of credentials in, um, in Malacanang Palace, for example, in our case. Um, you present your credentials to the president. And like in Korea, you go to, uh, what we did was we went to the, the presidential um, house, the blue house. You know? So those of you who watch uh, Korean films and movies, they, you know, sometimes they mention the blue house. So if you blue, blue house, house represent the president. Credentials, credentials are, is a letter signed by the president or you know, the head of government or state of your country, um, whatever the case may be, saying that uh, that uh, you are the bearer, uh, the person named in the letter is the official representative of the Philippines to your country. Uh, oh, wow. That's yes, alam mo yung process. Yeah, no, no, yon. So if you become ambassador <laughs> to the United Kingdom, for example, wow. then you present your credentials to the monarch, to the head of um, state. In the case of the United Kingdom, that uh, right now that would be Queen Elizabeth. So you oh, present wow. your Let's go, Jazz. We're rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ambassador, uh, recently lang po pala kayo, uh, yes. uh, to South Korea. We thought was it has uh, been a year. Uh, we're just, Lloyd and I are not curious. Yet, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. The Almost year, there the yeah. Second half of the year. Second half. Uh, Lloyd and I are curious, po, uh, how was your living experience po, so far in South Korea with the duration of since you were appointed well um with every uh posting with every foreign posting you get to uh, you, you of course you need to adjust there's some adjustments made but um the adjustments so far in in korea have not been um have not been really significant or maybe because i've been in uh in the diplomatic service for a long time already and this is uh, i think my my six the sixth country um, I've been assigned to, so um, I sort of have um, a formula in place already. So I, I know what I need, I know what to look for, I know how to adjust. Um, in terms of the weather, there's not too much adjustment. I've been posted in in temperate countries, uh, so I'm, I'm not too affected by 
by the climate, uh, you know, or the you know the weather changes. It's uh, it's it's not that uh, not that significant uh, an adjustment for me. But of course, you have to adjust to a lot of things like um, you know local customs, local practices. Uh, the language uh, is, is another adjustment also and um, of course you have to build your you have to build networks again because you're starting out so normally for us in, in the diplomatic service the first the first months of your stay is, is you're trying to consolidate and build uh, networks and contacts in fact for most of your the first year of your posting that's what that's what you will do so you um Magseset ka ng meeting, magre-request ka ng calls or meetings with um, with government officials um, from different ministries, um, and then the private sector, the business sector, the Filipino community overseas, um, media, cultural organizations. Um, you know, uh, you know all, all these. Uh, there, there's so many things that we do. Um, whenever we're posted abroad, uh, we have to cover the entire um, scope. Of um, of our bilateral relations with a particular country, so so there's a lot of adjustment there. It's really, um, you know, it's really trying to consolidate and, and building uh, new networks uh, in in this new posting. That's so. interesting to know. Po. Uh, it takes time, din po, pala na Yes, yes, posted. yes. Tamayon, and it's a little bit more challenging now during the pandemic because sometimes you don't get to meet them face to face or sometimes uh, meetings get postponed or they're converted into online meetings so uh, some of the personal connection is is lost uh, along the way uh, but you you need to you need to to meet people you need to establish your, yourself also you need to introduce yourself and you need to introduce the country uh, or reintroduce the, the country um, and um, remind them of the very strong uh, and historic uh, ties between the Philippines and Korea, for example. Uh, with that, po, uh, you mentioned po anina, uh, being an ambassador uh, to another country. It's part of the job is meeting people, making connections. Uh, we would like to know how was your experience po, uh, with meeting President of the South Korean President uh, Moon Jae in. Please, ano, share that experience. Po. Of we're course, curious, so. yes. It, of course, it's always an honor and a privilege um, to have an audience with the president of any country. In the ca- case of um, of uh, His Excellency President uh, Moon Jae in. Uh, we it, it used to be that you would present individually, you know, to to the president. Uh, you know, you have a specific time slot. But because of the pandemic, what they've done in Korea is you present as a group, uh, a group of around uh, seven seven ambassadors. Um, so we each had the opportunity, of course, to present our credentials to him uh, in the presence of the foreign minister of Korea. And then after that, uh, we um, were able to have um, a group uh, dialogue, a group conversation with uh, President Moon. Oh, and wow. each of us uh, were given an opportunity uh, to, to speak to him, to do whatever message we wanted to convey. And um, of course, on the part of the, the Philippines, um, we wanted to convey um, our appreciation for um, the many years of friendship this year, actually, um, we are celebrating 73 years of diplomatic relations with Korea. Actually, this month, March, um, we're celebrating 73 years of, of diplomatic relations. Um, and of course, we mentioned our shared um, historic sacrifices during uh, the Korean War. Um, I, I hope that Filipinos still remember um, that uh, during the uh, the Korean War, the Philippines was among the first uh, countries to um, to send um, combat troops under the Philippine Expeditionary um, Force to Korea or the PEFTO. Up to this day, that's really the, the at the core, at the heart. Sinasabing at the core, at the at the basic heart of our relationship with Korea is um, the shared sacrifices during the Korean War era. And um, that has just grown through the years. 
and branched out into other areas of, of cooperation of our relations. Uh, I mean, uh, for someone like me, na parang alam mo yon, hindi hindi ako super familiar with with the history on how uh, South Korea and Philippines uh, established that diplomatic ties, di ba? Parang uh, I was amazed kung paano nila tinulungan yung isa't isa para yung dalawang country is umangat, di ba? Para kasi some of the yeah. countries, let's say yung other countries na iniisip lang nila, iniisip lang nila yung kapakanan ng country nila pero hindi nila binibigyan ng you know ng ng kapakanan yung a partnership nilang country. So I guess uh, what's good with the diplomatic ties between the South Korea and the Philippines is that it's like a give and take na na process. Yes. Kaya, yes, in fact very well well put Lloyd. In fact, um, baka hindi po alam ng mga ibang Pilipino, ibang kababayan natin because they 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 know Korea right now as a very developed, you know, highly developed industrialized country. Um, you know, now now one of the top economies in the world. But when they were but they were devastated, you know, in the aftermath of the Korean War, wala silang makain, wala silang infrastructure. They were among the poorest um, countries um, in the world. Um, and um, they they never forget that um, during the early years of you know their struggle to you know to lift themselves up uh, out of poverty and to create a stronger uh, country, the Philippines was one of the countries which actually assisted them. Um, in fact, there are um, landmarks in Korea, um, landmark buildings in Korea, which and structures which um, were. Uh, designed and built by Filipino engineers and architects, and they always mention that, and they always say na they always say na nung naghihirap sila, no, um, ang Pilipinas ang isa sa mga tumulong sa kanila, which is why um, now um, they they uh, they they're they're very active also. They and uh, they want to be more active in in taking part in in helping out in supporting the development of the Philippines. So. So, parang sinasabi nila, we're paying it forward because you you helped us in the past. So, kami naman ngayon. Yeah, grabe. Nakakataba ng, ano, ng puso ko. No? Yeah. Pero, I mean, given the fact po na, you know, uh, for the longest time, na na-establish yung relationship between the, the Philippines and South Korea. So, uh, I just wanna ask him po, right now, uh, with your position as the Philippine ambassador, how do you maintain that healthy relationship between South Korea and the Philippines? Well, you have to have constant dialogue with them. That's why we, on our part, we try as much as possible to meet regularly with our counterparts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other um, agencies. And of course, we're looking, we're always looking at ways to further elevate the relationship. Just last October, uh, the end of October, we concluded the negotiations for a um, historic, for an historic um, Philippines-Korea free trade agreement. So, um, malaking bagay po na magkaroon ng free trade agreement uh, sa pagitan ng dalawang bansa. Um, taon ho, taon taon ho yan na binubuo, no? Yung uh, free trade agreement. So, in the case of the Philippines and Korea, na tapos na po yung negosasyon. Uh, we concluded negotiations uh, in late October last year, 2021, um, and now uh, our governments are in the process of uh, finalizing um, the free trade agreement for, for final signature and then for ratification by our respective legislature. So, uh, malaking bagay po yan uh, because we will get um, a better deal. Um, on the part of the Philippines, for example, we will get a better deal on some of the products we export to Korea, particularly our fresh fruits and vegetables, um, and uh, hopefully also benefit from cooperation in um, the health services sector, in vaccine uh, development, um, in other life-saving industries, also in the e-vehicle industry, which is um, becoming more and more um, significant now, more and more prominent. Wow! <laughs> Grabe. Ang dami po pala, ano. Marami hong ginagawa na ito. Marami <laughs> hong ginagawa. So, ang mga em- embahada po natin, mga konsulado, um, sinasabi ko nga po lagi, pag uh, naimbitahan mo ako sa mga ganitong pagkakataon, uh, sabi ko, isipin nyo na lang yung ginagawa ng gobyerno sa Pilipinas. So, meron kang Ministry of Trade and Industry. 
Meron kang um, Department of Trade and Industry, DTI. Meron kang DFA, Foreign Affairs. Meron kang Department of Science and Technology. Meron kang Department of Health. Uh, Department of Environment. Um, kami po ang trabaho namin, lahat po yun. Yeah. Mid-Korea. <laughs> Ginagawa po namin, lahat yun. So, kumbaga parang mini version po kami ng gobyerno dito. Oh, wow po. Uh, with, madami po palang ano, uh, nangyayari and ginagawa po. But with everything happening po, uh, we would like to know, what is the most fulfilling moment for you po as the Philippine ambassador to South Korea if na, if wala naman po uh, is there anything else you would like to achieve as the Philippine ambassador to South Korea but it's still it's still quite early um in in my uh, my term my tour of duty but um, aside of course from from being able to present your credentials officially to the to the head of government Um, head of State and Government here in Korea, my presentation to of credentials to President Moon Jae-in. Um, the most fulfilling, there are two really um, fulfilling um, things so far in, in my still relatively short stint here. One is um, the conclusion of the negotiations for the free trade agreement kasi napakalaking bagay po niyan. Uh, for for many of our economic sectors in the Philippines, especially um, You know those producing um, fresh fruit and vegetables. And the other one, uh, aside from the free trade agreement uh, conclusion, uh, is uh, that um, our workers, uh, our Filipino workers, the um, under the employment permit system, are now allowed uh, have been allowed to re-enter because Korea suspended um, the entry during the pandemic. Um, but now, since uh, late last year, since November last year, they've been allowed to re-enter. So, our EPS workers uh, for the manufacturing sector in Korea have been returning. And also, um, the non-government, uh, non-Korean government Filipino students have also been, just recently, been allowed to return. So, I'm sure po, uh, there are more to come po. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> well, Let's claim it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, since we we have tackled na po, uh, regarding you know the, the history uh, between the bilateral ties uh, ng Philippines and South Korea, and then we also talk about y- your background as the Philippine ambassador. So now let's move on to another um, another topic that is related to uh, the Philippine ambassador. Because di ba um, part of the job as the Philippine ambassador to a country is the promotion of the Filipino culture. So, uh, Ambassador, we saw a video where you did like a mini house tour of your place in South Korea and you have a lot of indigenous materials displayed. So, um, Ambassador, we are very interested to know uh, about that. So, could you please uh, tell us a bit more about your collection? So, I collect a lot of these things. Um, mga inabel. So, yun yung pinapakita ko lagi. I use them. Um, a lot of them are in storage, actually. But some I bring out from time to time to decorate um, the residence. So, in in effect, when you have guests at the residence, uh, they become conversation pieces. So, like, yes. nito nung oh ano yan? Bakit bakit yung throw pillow mo? Um, uh, ganyan yung yung fabric hindi lang yung regular silk or cotton, cotton silk blended, uh, you know. Um, industrial fabrics and I, then I can tell them the story. So this is Inabel. Uh, so and then I'll, I can say things like this is woven by by women weavers um, in the Locos region for example or uh, these are uh, tinalak um, this is tinalak cloth uh, woven by weavers in, in Mindanao in the southern part of the Philippines and they're called dream weavers. The patterns come to them in dreams. Um, paggising nila may pattern na nasa ulo na nila so diretso na sila sa, sa weaving it's very very um, I think important um, aspect of our culture so yun po and then I also display a lot of um, Philippine basketry and woodwork and indigenous instruments wow. mga kumintang mga gamelan no? so mga flute po mga bamboo flutes So I, I like to I like to um, I like to display that. So they so whenever you have guests, they know a little more about uh, our culture. Yes, and uh, ambassador, even though you're not in the Philippines, pero pag nakita mo yung mga indigenous materials, parang you still feel now you're in the Philippines, kasi di ba? 
uh, you are supporting uh, those local materials that was made in the Philippines for for the younger generation now. I guess it's time for them to appreciate them. Yung yeah. mga ganong bagay, kasi di ba po parang if um, people like us or the younger generations can can buy the the branded ones, di ba? Why can't we appreciate the locals, di ba? It's like uh, ano ba naman yung embrace natin yung sariling atin, di ba? Yeah. It's our own identity, so why not uh, why not use it or why not decorate it within our homes or even use it on a daily basis, di ba? Kasi uh, ang kulang lang talaga with those indigenous materials is the appreciation from the Filipinos. Totoo yan. Ako, introduce na kita sa Hobby Council, Lloyd. Pwede Ay, ka na mga <laughs> person para sa kanila. <laughs> Hindi, ito yung pinatawag nating sustainable fashion then sustainable yes, lifestyle. Oh. Um, kasi sabi nila, um, medyo mahal minsan yung mga yung mga indigenous na no, Filipiniana Be- because it's handmade yes, a lot manually. of these are handmade manual siya pero pag kinumpara mo yung presyo nila at yung presyo ng mga branded mas mura pa rin kaya <laughs> diba bakit hindi yeah. plus as Lloyd mentioned it's sustainable sustainable yan because um, tawag nga nila slow fashion but in our case hindi lang yung concept ng slow fashion yung din yung pag yung preservation ng kultura yes na ano na basehan nung nung paggawa nung pagproduce ah uh, ambassador i'm curious ko uh, you mentioned weaves yung mga uh, these filipino uh, cultural items is this ano po uh, for a korean is this something Um, I'm curious. Po sa, do they often ask? Yes, you, uh, yes. What is this? What is this? Uh, yes, in fact, um, when I presented my credentials uh, to President Moon Jae-in, I made it a point. I always make it a point to wear um, something from the Philippines. So I wore a sort of a modern terno yes, made we, of piña, made of piña fiber. Well. So, um, lahat sila nagtatanong, <laughs> what is that material? <laughs> the and they're curious sila and na-astound sila. They're astounded wow. when I tell them, that's made from pineapple fiber. And they're wondering, how? How do you make? So, I, I explain, you know, they very meticulously, they take the fibers from the, the crown of the pineapple, Fine. then they they pound it several times to soften it, and then that's what they use to weave the cloth. And it takes uh, it takes weeks, sometimes months, to just to create, you know, a large piece of cloth, which is turned into, you know, a, a piece of clothing or a bag or a fan. I, I, in some of uh, the the giveaways I give here in in Korea and in my previous postings are are always Philippine made. Yes. You know, they they always feature something from the Philippines and. I remember giving a um, Philippine piña fan, pamaypay abaniko. Yes. Si mainit din dito pag summer yeah. uh, to a Korean um, lady, uh, and she was very very happy uh, when she opened it up. She said, "What is this? What is this?" Piña. I said, "That's that's pineapple fiber." So, sabi niya, it will, this will be a treasured possession. Or I've also wow. given uh, an official here um, a face mask, because kailangan pa rin mag-mask dito. Face mask made of, um, of course, inside, it's very comfortable. It, it's cotton, you can put a filter uh, inside, but outside, uh, embroidered pinya. I said, you can wear it for special occasions, but put the put the filter that comes with it inside so you're safe. And um, she said, it's so beautiful. I, you know, <laughs> yung gandang-ganda sila. Or, you, you know, I've given um, earrings made in the Philippines or our Philippine pearls. Um, from Palawan, uh, which um, uh, they love uh, very much, you know? so so um, I tell them, and I always tell them, "Meron na kung spill, no? Lagi ako may spill jan." When you come to the Philippines, when you visit the Philippines, I'll tell you where to find. The best promotion. Kamot natin ng, sure, ang bansa natin. Yes. Tung mga businesses din, yung mga entrepreneurs natin. That's a dream for. Uh, since we talk about it info with regards to the Filipino culture, so um, we would just like to ask with regards to ano po, the Filipinos. So why do you think po kaya some Filipinos embrace uh, the Korean culture these days? And with all those pag embrace nila with that uh, with that Korean culture, uh, how would you remind the Filipinos with regards to not forgetting our own culture as well? Yes, I, I always tell um, other people, uh, Filipinos, other Philippines, for example, um, it, it's it's 
there's nothing wrong if it's actually um, as a sign of your openness, a sign of you know our Filipino culture. We're very open, inclusive people, and we embrace other cultures, and, that, and that's good. That's very positive to be curious and to appreciate. Um, the cultures of, of other countries, for example, but it's very important over and above that uh, to value and treasure and, and promote your own culture. So, and that's that's um, part of our job here um, in Korea, for example. That's why for Filipino Food Month, uh, we we um, we decided that our theme will be discovering Filipino um, food culture in Korea. Yes, and if I might just add, lang din po pala. I mean, with regards to that question po kasi, parang uh, based on our perspectives po here in the Philippines, I think na one of the reasons why very, you know, the Filipinos are, are into the Korean culture is because of kung paano yung K-pop, na, na, yung reach ng K-pop po, di ba? And, and even K-dramas as well. I, I guess here in the Philippines, at least, di ba, parang ganun ka-impactful yung K-pop and K-dramas to the Filipinos to the point na uh, kapag nakakita sila ng like, let's say mga food na kinakain ng mga idols or even yes. mga places na napipicture sa K-dramas di ba parang they, they get curious and ayun to the, hindi na nila namamalaya na parang they are very invested na agad to, to experience yes. that exactly Lloyd I, but I think the, the lesson here is um, that's all that's all um, well and good yes. um, to admire that and you, you know there, there really is something uh, very admirable about how um about how Korea has been able to, um, I'm going to use a very technical term, leverage. Kung baga, le- leverage nila. Ginagamit nila yung, nagagamit nila yung popularity ng yes. kanilang pop culture, cultural yes. content, um, na overseas, globally, uh, to promote other aspects of their culture, their country, and um, their economy. Like, um, as you mentioned, no, yung the food, that's why there's a boom in, in key food products yes. around the world uh, and uh, beauty also. That's yes. why there's also a boom in, in key beauty um, and also tourism. They want to go to the places featured in, in whatever um, film or, or series they've seen or a music video, for example. But it's something I bet I always tell um, Filipinos and the content creators in the Philippines. Uh, that it's also something that we can do because we have um, such a pool of talented people. For our next uh, question, po, uh, you mentioned po, Ambassador, na there are some Filipinos who own restaurants or if not, they are part of the employees of like promoting uh, Filipino cuisine and but the restaurant is owned by a uh, Korean. Uh, we would like to now talk about po, uh, the OFWs in uh, South Korea, uh, aside from uh, being part of promoting the cuisine uh, employed to a uh, Filipino restaurant, what other uh, jobs po or professions do OFWs have in Korea? Po? The, the bulk of our Filipino community in Korea, right now we're at about uh, just um, under 50,000, so around 46,000. Um, and because some left during the pandemic, some opted to return to the Philippines during the pandemic, um, which is um, which happened in many many countries, no, sa maraming bansa, no, they uh, some of them were um, displaced by the pandemic economically. Yung iba naman po uh, ginusto na nilang umuwi, no, mag for good uh, to be closer to family, um, because understandably. Um, many many lives uh, were disrupted. Many many lives were disrupted by the pandemic. But the bulk of our um, overseas Filipinos here um, are workers under the employment permit system, which is um, a unique um, employment system in Korea. Uh, it's a government to government arrangement, no, um, between Korea and, and and other countries, including the Philippines. Um, for um, for labor migration, it's it's a labor uh, migration um, related arrangement, um, which ensures um, you know uh, you know uh, compliance with with the with the standards with international standards of labor um, in terms of wages, in terms of work hours and living conditions. Um, on the side of the um, Korean government. 
Um, it's under the Ministry of Labor, um, Ministry of Employment and Labor, and the counterpart is the Department of um, Department of Labor and Employment (DOLE). And then on the operations um, level, it's the Philippine Overseas um, Employment um, Authority, Administration or POEA. And then their counterpart is Human Resources um, Korea, Development Korea (HRDK). So sila po yung ano nag uh, nangangasiwa po diyan sa tinatawag nating EPS permit system. And then here in Korea, um, the you know the the technical operations also ensuring that everything is in place is also being overseen by the Philippine Overseas Labor Office. May labor attache po tayo dito. Meron din po tayong OWA welfare officer. And on the part of the Philippine Embassy, the Department of Foreign Affairs, for example, where we're from, we also have an assistance to national section or ATN section. So, part po yan ng trabaho natin, maliban pa dun sa economic, political, um, engagements, cultural, um, educational, public diplomacy po natin. Ito ho, malaking, malaking bahagi po ng trabaho namin dito. Um, making sure that... Um, our OFWs, our overseas Filipino workers, um, are treated fairly, um, justly, and of course, we um, we provide assistance whenever um, we have cases of Filipinos in distress. Um, this is actually, um, this forms a big part of our job here. This is every day, po. this is the frontline aspect of our work. Wow. So, um, for the Philippines po kasi, ang mga workers po natin dito are mostly in the manufacturing sector. So, sa mga factories, assembly lines, andyan po sila, iba-iba pong industry dyan. May heavy industry, merong mga um, household goods. Uh, so, they fall under that category. But, ano po yan? Government to government. Yes. Government to government po yan. But, we also have... Um, those um, outside the EPS system, um, but not too many, it's very small, um, it's much, much smaller percentage. We have actually um, a number, a growing number of professors, uh, Filipino professors in different universities um, here in Korea. In fact, they have their own organization, the Association of Filipino Educators um, in Korea. And um, uh, also we have students, um, and they also have their organization here. Um, and then we have um, engineers. Uh, meron din po silang association dito, Filipino engineers in Korea. And um, we also have what we call the faith-based professionals, uh, mga religious workers um, belonging to different um, to different um, faith um, communities, so pastors, um, religious po priests, um, nuns, um, lay ministers. Meron din po tayo niyan. And then we have um, also have some Filipinos in the IT field uh, and also in the services sector um, and in the content knowledge industry sector. So, halo-halo. But the bulk po talaga uh, mga um, EPS workers. And also, uh, we have um, a significant number of marriage migrants. Pero mag-ingat po sila, mag-ingat din sila like for the EPS workers um, through POEA lang po yan. Kaya wag po kayong maniniwala. Meron po kasi, unfortunately, ho, unfortunately sa tinagal-tagal ko na po sa gobyerno, um, meron pa rin po mga nabibiktima, mga illegal recruiters. Hindi lang po uh, going to Korea but to, uh, to other countries. no. Uh, dito po sa Korea kasi, ang EPS workers is only government to government. So POEA lang po. So wag po kayong maniniwala dyan sa mga advertisement ng mga uh, ano ho, mga, uh, mga employment agencies, mga ganyan po, uh, mag-check po muna. Mag, yes. uh, mag-check po muna kayo sa POEA. Yun po ang lagi namin tayo. Check first ho. Pag may nakita kayong advertisement, uh, i-verify nyo muna sa POEA. O kaya, pwede rin po silang mag-email sa Philippine Overseas Labor Office po sa, sa Philippine Embassy. Under po ito ng uh, ng DOLE, may represent, representante po sila dito, yung aming labor attache uh, from the Department of Labor po para po ma-check at ma-verify yung mga yung mga job orders or job announcements na baka peke naman po, fake news. So, baka po mabiktima po sila. So, I hope it's clear to our uh, dear listeners yung mga ganong bagay. Let's be 
mindful then before we, we we apply not just sa isang job in in South Korea but uh, as well as to other countries na din. So ayun, grabe we haven't finished yet this podcast with Ambassador pero ang dami na nating natutunan but before we continue to the last set of questions po, uh, we prepared a little game for you Ambassador. So don't worry, ah. this is just a this is Hello, rapid a, fast fun game. Yeah, uh, so just <laughs> Why don't you explain the mechanics? of the game to Ambassador? Uh, Ambassador, ano po? Yeah, it's uh, quite fast po. It's yes, fast talk po actually. Uh, it's <laughs> we prepared <laughs> 10 questions for you. Uh, and all you have to do is answer these questions uh, with the first thing that comes in your mind. So Lloyd will be uh, asking giving, the questions. Uh, asking the questions. <laughs> and we're very curious po sa mga answers niyo po to these uh, 10 questions that we prepared for. So, Ambassador, are you ready po? Okay. Are no. you ready? Okay. <laughs> so, the, uh, the first question is, favorite Korean food? Bibimbap. Favorite place in South Korea? Seoul. Favorite K-pop <laughs> song? Favorite? K-pop song. K-pop song. I'm not really into K-pop. Uh, Cherry Blossom ending Basker Basker. But it's not really K-pop. It's, <laughs> it's okay. More fun. Uh, how about favorite key drama? Uh, DP. Favorite Filipino dessert? Oh, hard. Halo, halo. Halo, halo. Favorite Filipino actress or actor? Oh my, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's so hard because I'm, I'm, I'm a film buff. Okay. Oh my god. I'm a film buff. Um, Mona Lisa. You probably don't know her. She passed away yeah. already. She's a very, very respected actress. First thing you do in the morning? Pray. Uh, your favorite K-pop group? K-pop group? I'm not really into K-pop eh. But I'm, I'm into the older K-pop group. Uh, so I'll okay. say uh, CN Blue and Basker oh. Basker. <laughs> favorite <laughs> movie director? Okay. Oh, local um, or international? Local or international? Oh, goodness. Uh, the Coen Brothers, um, international. <laughs> Uh, local, local, oh, uh, local uh, Ishmael Bernal. Wow. And last is favorite place in the Philippines? Home. Uh, <laughs> home. Oh, no, no, actually, my yeah, oh, yeah. Home, the... home. home uh, which is in San Juan, Metro Manila. But uh, outside of that, my, um, uh, my home province of Tarlac. Wow. So, you know, naman po, very easy. <laughs> Parang dumaan lang yung questions. So, thank you for participating po sa game. And at least, di ba, we get to know you po better pa with those questions. Jazz? Thank you, thank you po, uh, Ambassador. Kung disclosure dun sa mga sagot ko. Medyo. <laughs> Mabilis. Mabilis. Uh, thank you po for uh, participating on our mini game po uh, for anyong kwento mo. Uh, we are down to the last set of questions, but we want to ask you, Ambassador, uh, is there anything you would like to say to the OFWs in Korea and to our fellow Filipinos who could be listening to Anyong Pentamo right now? Po? Uh, nice ko lang pong ipaabot uh, dito po sa programa ng uh, Anyong Kwento Mo uh, sa ating mga kababayan po sa Korea na ang embahada po ng Pilipinas ay bukas po sa inyong lahat. Uh, layunin po namin na patuloy na pagandahin po ang serbisyo para sa inyo. Um, we're here to support you. We, we hope also that um, you will take more active part in many of our programs, especially our online uh, webinars. Meron na po tayong nilaunch uh, nitong taong ito, nung Enero, na Know Your Rights and Responsibilities Seminar. Nagkaroon na po tayo ng uh, legal aid online. Um, seminar at meron din po tayo mga entrepreneurial and skills development seminars sa ilalim po ng aming Pik Pinoy um, banner uh, dito po sa embahada at uh, sana po tangkinikin nyo po yan yung ating regular po na leaders forum na ginagawa po natin uh, lagi po dito sa embahada at uh, sana po patuloy pong uh, maging maayos po ang pamumuhay nyo dito sa Korea uh, hangad din po namin maayos laging ang inyong kalusugan uh, na kayo po ay ligtas no, sa lahat ng, uh, ng sa, sa COVID o kung ano man pong mga mga, mga sakit o mga 
uh, mga ano po no ipo pang mga bagay at uh, sana po magkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na magkita-kita ng personal po uh, sa darating po na panahon uh, keep safe po lagi um, we're here to um, assist and support you and um, please uh, please always um, try uh, try to participate in many of our events um, for the Filipino community marami pong salamat Uh, to our dear listeners, you heard it from Ambassador. Uh, keep safe and watch out for uh, events for our Filip- fellow Filipinos, local and uh, in South Korea as well. So, uh, for the last question po, Ambassador, uh, this question is for those young girls who could be listening to our podcast right now. So, Uh, let's say someone right now, like a little girl, is listening to the podcast and she aspired to be like you someday. So the question is, what advice would you give to this little girl? Since we are, um, this is the last day of uh, International Women's Month. Yes. And awesome. International Women's Month advocacy is not only for women, but also for young girls. Yes. But also for young girls, it's very important. Um, I always say, um, study hard. Um, follow your parents um, but also um, have a very positive outlook in life and be um, very tolerant and inclusive and welcoming to all and um, accept uh, the differences of people and respect them um, and I think um, uh, if you do all these things then you're in a very good position you're you're going towards uh, a very positive direction in your life and that you can do anything you can be anything and if you haven't seen anyone do it before then you could be the first to do wow. it <laughs> wow <laughs> I felt that I felt. Um, so diba, parang, uh, I hope uh, ambassador Uh, gets to be your inspiration din talaga in, your, in reaching your dreams. Kasi uh, here in the Philippines, meron pa rin discrimination with regards to the women. Parang pinagdududahan nila yung capacity of a woman. And so to, to those young girls who could be listening to our podcast right now, diba? I hope you get that strength and courage to, to stand up and prove to everyone that what men can do, diba? women can do it better. So, uh, ayun, before we wrap up this show, uh, are there any anything you would like to promote po, um, Ambassador? Well, um, just to say, um, of course, thank you to um, to um, Anyong Kwento Mo, to Nash Ang, uh, and to um, all our listeners, um, and to our kababayans in, in, uh, in Korea. Thank you for taking part in uh, many of our online um, seminars and webinars for you. And um, my... Um, My, I just have uh, two announcements, uh, two very important announcements to make, if you'll allow me. First is, we just like to remind um, the Filipino community that um, since uh, last year, since late last year, since November of last year, um, the Philippine Embassy is um, has been operating uh, normal hours already, um, same uh, hours uh, before the pandemic. And that uh, since last year also, we've been accepting um, walk-in clients aside from those with online appointments. And we will continue to do that uh, this to, so that we can accommodate and assist uh, more Filipinos. Um, and the second uh, major reminder announcement is that we will be holding um, overseas absentee voting already for the Philippine national elections here in Korea next month. And that um, we are actually holding an information session uh, on Saturday. Uh, that's the uh, that's the second of April, April 2 at 3 p.m. Korean Standard Time, 3 p.m. KST, where we will walk you through um, again through the process of how to vote um, in Korea for um, those who have uh, who are registered voters and whose names appear in the um, Commission on Elections or Comelec. Certified list of uh, overseas voters here in Korea. So you can check our official Facebook page, Philippine Embassy in Korea, for more details and to register. But we will also be streaming uh, portions of this on Facebook. So uh, yeah. please, ano po, yung mga qualified voters po, uh, please um, uh, try your best. We encourage you to exercise your um, sacred right of suffrage. Ayan, uh, to the listeners of Anyong Kwento Mo, uh, please do take note of these uh, two important reminders from 
ambassador uh, herself uh, and it may i add uh, just a small realization that uh, what i picked up today uh, it is important uh, not even though wala pong position you be open to people it's a way of understanding who they are uh, they are different and there's nothing wrong in like appreciating uh, another culture maybe uh, western or another here in asia uh, right now it's the korean culture uh, that fits uh, to our uh, topic for ajong kwento mo but at the end of the day do not forget uh, your own culture if filipino uh, don't forget uh, where you came from don't forget where home is you know Oh, ako naman. Ano ko yung lalo ba ng Ako, level up, Lloyd. Oh gosh. Level up. Ako. Pag ano na yun eh, yung, yung sinabi Universe. ni Dras, hindi lang pang Miss Universe, pang Miss International, pang Miss World, at pang Miss Supranational. Lahat ko nang may Miss. <laughs> ako naman, uh, ang take ko with this um, episode of our podcast, since uh, you mentioned that sa culture, ako naman magbe-base ako with the Philippine ambassador itself. I mean, uh, sa podcast na to, di ba, parang na-uncover talaga yung trabaho ng isang Philippine ambassador. And it's not a joke. I mean, it's it's not an easy job to do. Sabi nga ni, ni, ni uh, Madam Ambassador, kung ano yung uh, mga ginagawa sa Philippines, sa government, di ba, parang sila, lahat yon nakakover di ba it's not it's, it's really not an easy job and and right now na di ba we are experiencing not just the pandemic but as well as say, yung um, conflict between the, the Ukraine and Russia di ba parang uh, part of the role of the Philippine ambassador is to promote talaga bilateral ties and that healthy relationship between two countries and we are very lucky na na we are experience we are experiencing a good relationship with uh, another country just like in South Korea and for all the things that, that you've done for the country um, ambassador uh, in behalf of the Filipinos we are very much um, thankful and grateful for your job po. so ayun yung naging realization ko for today's podcast maraming salamat uh, Lloyd and Jasmine ano lang po I, I always say para sa bayan that's our rallying cry that's been my rallying cry um, ever since um, we, we serve po 24-7 in all time zones Uh, wala pong, walang tulugan po kami po yun. Um, gaya po, dagdag pa po yung sa election, kami rin po yung deputized election officers po every time there's an election. So, marami po. But, um, but as I said, uh, that, that's that's our job. We are the mini government po. So, kung ano pong pangangailangan ng mga kababayan, we do our best. There are some limitations. There are some things we're not allowed to do. We're not authorized to do, but we can, um, as much as possible, direct them to the the right person, the right uh, ministry, the right office, po, uh, kung saan, or the right institution, po, kung uh, kung sino makakatulong po sa kanila. Ayun po. Uh, once again, po, uh, Ambassador, in behalf of Tinoy Soul Radio, we would like to thank you, po, uh, Ambassador Her Excellency Maria Teresa B. Dizon de Vega, for accepting our invitation to our podcast and yung kwento mo. Yes, and maraming salamat po, Ambassador, for spending your time with our podcast. And maraming salamat din po for everything that you have done for the Philippines and to us, the Filipinos. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you. Maraming salamat. And, keep safe, uh, keep safe, yes. everyone. And, and to our dear listeners who are tuned in today for our pilot episode, thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, the fir- the very first episode yes. of Anyong Kwento Mo. Yes, and now we have reached the closing part for today's podcast episode with the Philippine Ambassador to South Korea, Her Excellency Maria Teresa B. Dizon de Vega. As much as we want to extend this podcast, our time is up. And that's it for this week's episode of Anyong Kwento Mo, Philippine Ambassador. Make sure to stay tuned with our next guest for the next episode. And I guess our listeners are free to guess yeah. who it is. Yes. Maybe when we release the teaser, pwede sila mag-comment doon. Yes. And It's very fun and exciting. Yes. Uh, so do I, Jazz. I'm really excited for that. And also, make sure to catch... Other shows on Pinoy Soul Radio like PS Pa Request with DJ Sam G every Monday 
and Pinoy Soul Top 20 that is live every Friday. So make sure to vote for your favorite K-pop songs by following the format posted on our Twitter account. It's at Pinoy Soul. Also, follow me on Instagram at Lloyd Bagus X. Jessica, Ba, do you like to promote something? Yes, Lloyd. We also have an app, the Pinoy Soul Radio uh, app for Android users. But don't worry, for iOS, it's soon coming your way uh, to catch the replay of our pilot episode. Uh, also, if you you would like to uh, visit our Facebook page and our website, both is named PinoySoul.com to catch updates with our latest contents and of course, like what Lloyd did, uh, follow me on Instagram at JazzK underscore D08. Yes. Yeah, just do it. Pwede rin mo bang magpa-follow on Instagram? Sure follow me on Instagram. <laughs> okay, sure so, you may do please so. Please follow us on Instagram at PH in Korea. At yes. PH, that's PH in Korea. And that's the official Instagram account of the Philippine Embassy. Yes. And our um, official Facebook page, the Philippine Embassy in Korea. And my personal account at uh, MTDZON de Vega. Yes. Noted. 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 <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I guess that's it for today. This has been Lloyd. And I'm Jazz. And you're listening to Anyong Kwento Mo, where we talk about lifestyle, music, and culture in both Philippines and Korea. Tune in next week for another fun and exciting episode only here at Pinoy Soul Radio. Anyong! Bye! Anyong. Listen to a Nyong Kwento Mo podcast with Lloyd and Jazz, where we talk about lifestyle, music, and culture in both the Philippines and Korea. Catch us again next time, only here on Pinoy Soul Radio.